Yeah, I think that we've lost all sense of perspective. Today could be D-Day for Boris. Sue Gray's report could drop at any moment pretty much. And depending on how incriminating it is for the Prime Minister, the letters may come flooding in to the 1922 committee and Boris could face a vote of no confidence. But I think the public are losing confidence in our politicians' judgment and the media's news radar. Do we want what happens next? Do you want a general election? I think we're at serious risk of destabilising our country right at the time when we need stability. We're potentially about to ditch a Prime Minister, potentially then have a general election between two candidates that, frankly, the public don't really care about. That election could probably have a relatively low turnout and there would be a smaller majority. Then if the Tories won, Keir Starmer would probably have to go and then we're all bogged down in a Labour leadership election, aren't we? And before you know it, within the space of about a year, our two major political parties have ripped themselves apart and guess what? We'll have achieved absolutely nothing. In the meantime, Putin might own Ukraine. We won't have sorted out the energy crisis. The cost of fuel will be excruciatingly high. Levelling up simply won't have happened. Children will still have a mental health crisis. I could go on. Boris Johnson has probably been quite silly. He almost definitely has. He's quite possibly broken the rules that he helped to create. And I can understand why people are very angry, genuinely. But I'm more angry about the fact that we were thrust into lockdown based on flawed and inaccurate data. We're talking about Boris Johnson potentially losing his job and plunging ourselves into chaos because he had a few parties. Like I said, I can totally understand why people may think that he has to go. But if these are the rules... I'd also like to see Chris Whitty go. I'd like to see Professor Neil Ferguson never spoken to again. I'd like to see all the people responsible for our dodgy COVID predictions that directly caused us to go into lockdown a couple of times, that cost people their jobs, their mental health, meant they couldn't pay their rent, ripped families apart. Well, then they should go too. What's worse, blowing out the candles on your birthday cake and having some cheese and wine, or systematically and consistently getting the numbers wrong, stripping people of their civil liberties and scaring the living heck out of the nation? Mistakes have been made by Boris Johnson, undeniably. But I think that these pale into insignificance when compared to the mistakes made by our COVID modelers and our chief medical officer. I'd like to have an inquiry into that, to be honest with you. How did these people get it so badly wrong? To quote Tory MP Bob Seeley, and indeed Churchill actually, he said, never before has so much harm been done to so many by so few. And we had that farcical period of time, didn't we, where we completely fudged our COVID death toll. You couldn't recover from COVID, apparently. So we had the highest death rate in Europe. We had to shut our country down completely. And actually, it turned out that people were getting COVID, recovering from it, dying in a car crash, but still being recorded as a COVID victim. We put a lot of faith in Neil Ferguson, a bloke whose inaccurate foot and mouth modelling led to millions of animals being slaughtered in 2001 and just accepted his hysterical figures as fact. I could go on and on all day about the amount of times Chris Whitty has popped up on our TVs, terrified the nation and then been proven wrong by reality. Whether or not you think Boris Johnson should go, the fact is we're in the middle of a concerted anti-Boris campaign led by many people in the media. I think when you have the likes of Alistair Campbell being interviewed on the topics of integrity and honesty, as he was this morning, actually, we're probably scraping the very bottom of the barrel, aren't we? We've lost all sense of perspective, all sense of proportion, a lot of people are being very virtuous here, very worthy. They're taking the moral high ground and pretending to be affronted by Boris Johnson's parties, when in reality, a lot of people just don't like him and want him out. I think there's a real chance that as a nation, we'll wake up in about a year's time, having dedicated all of our national energy towards ousting a prime minister, replacing him, possibly finding a new leader of the opposition, and actually accomplishing the square root of NAF all and not sorting out any of the very real problems facing this country. I think there's a chance, if we carry on down this road, that we will wake up in about a year's time and wonder what on earth we've done.